Welcome everyone. Welcome to Patty Pocket Pouring Art. Um, I'm Patty. I, before we get started with this, I wanted to show you a couple of dried paintings that I've done. Um, this is one of my web effect paintings. Um, you can see how it shimmers. So um, there should be a video on how I did this and now it's nice and dry. This was done with the Craft Smart Black, which is sort of a matte finish. And with this effect, I think that really has a lot to do with getting these webbing. And, if, and then I use the gold and it's just shimmery. And then I use some Posca pens and embellished it. So I just wanted to show you that one, dried. And then um, I have a whole another video with these are just a couple of the coasters I've done with the Shelley art technique. Very shimmery, pretty, little glam. Anyway, I've done, I did six coasters. These are all the same colors and I layered them in different, uh, different layers, the colors on each one. So it's a little experiment with using the same colors and how different they can turn out depending on how you layer them. So today, what I'm going to do is, this is a 9 by 12 um, I haven't really done, I've done a couple black and whites, but they never, I don't know, I'm not happy with them. Black and white is sort of a hard, it's, it's hard to get a really nice pour with black and white, at least for me. So I'm going to try another one. So I'm going to use, like I talked about, the Craft Smart, that's... For my black, I'm using one part Craft Smart black, two parts Artist Loft black, and Floetrol to a where it does it does leave a trace in the cup. It does leave a mound, sinks in, but it's still it's not super thin. It's just average, I guess if you can see that. And my white is two parts semi-gloss house paint, which I use the, this is a Glidden, use the Glidden semi-gloss. Two parts um, Artist Loft White, which you know what that looks like. And then um, I'm going to inject, oh, I'm sorry, and then one part Deco Art Satin Enamel. So those three paints I mixed in here, I'm getting a trace also not as much as the black, but I'm getting a trace. Yeah, okay, so I got that. And then I'm gonna inject with my um, two parts semi-gloss to one part milk paint. And then with that, I mixed two parts Floetrol. So I have it in a little bottle where I can do an injection. So I'm really experimenting with different products, different One's semi-gloss, one's matte. I got the milk paint, the satin. So I want to experiment on the 9 by 12 before I go bigger with this to see what happens. So I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to just do a straight pour with the white. And then I'm going to pour the black over it. And then I'm going to do the injection. So let's get started here. Where's my chopstick? I always have a chopstick so I can rest my sticks on and I can reuse them after they dry and they don't stick to whatever I'm laying them on. Okay, so I don't have any, this is just a dry canvas. I don't have any base coat down. Just gonna see what happens here. That's a lot of paint already, but I'm sure we'll be tilting it off. Okay, now I'm going to just pour the black over the white. Let me pop those bubbles. There's a lot of bubbles in there first. Okay. Now I'm just going to pour over the white. A 
think that's plenty. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and pop those bubbles. Now I'm going to go ahead and <clears throat> do some of my injection here. Okay, I have no idea what's going to happen here. Well, I think I'm going to get maybe some clouds in here. Hopefully some cool effects. So let me pop those bubbles. See if anything starts coming up. That white should start coming up. just a few minutes here. Anyway, um, as I tape this and I video this, I'm not sure when I'm going to be posting it, but I just want to let Australia know I'm thinking about all those Auss Aussies and the fires going on over there. It's just how devastating. And um, I really feel for you guys. I really do. Um, I'm in California. We have our electricity shut off when it's windy. I live in the forest. I definitely um, know about fire danger and how scary it can be. And I just, you know, I have a plan to get everything out. Um, I can get everything out in 10 minutes in my house. So I have to have that ready to go. I know all the exit routes. Um, definitely scary, but I love where I live in the foothills of California. And, um, I'm willing to just, you know, put up with that risk because I love it so much. But um, just prayers to all you guys. Um, hopefully I can get this video out soon. But as I make this painting right now, I'm going to be leaving for Kona, Hawaii. And uh, well, day after tomorrow. And I won't be able to paint my studio for about three months. And it's... You know, I've been going there eight years now, and every year, I mean, I love it there. But I'm going to so miss my studio because um, I love doing this. And now that I have my channel, I'm just, I love it even more. So I've pre-taped a lot of painting uh, videos that I can post. And also, I'm taking a whole half a suitcase full of things so I can actually do smaller paintings um, there. So I'm going to get into alcohol inks and different things like that. So I'll still be filming from there, but um, I'm just going to miss this. So let me see today's date. And what is it? The 5th? Yeah, January 5th. So we have a few curls, cells coming up, cells I'd call them. So let me see what happens when I tilt. Actually, I see a lot of bubbles, so let me pop those again. There we go. Not really getting a lot of uh, the injection white coming up like what normally happens, which I was a little surprised about. And I'm not sure if it's because of the uh, the matte finish on part of that black, or I mean the black's just not sinking. 
I'm not, I don't know, maybe it'll start popping up pretty soon here. I really like experimenting, um, learning new techniques. I watch a lot of YouTube videos just like you do. Okay, we got some white starting to come up now more. I'm gonna actually torch right now. So I am looking forward to the warm weather that's in Kona. So if any of y'all want to come over to Kona or plan on it at some point, go ahead and message me. I have a sheet on all the things to do, all the best beaches, the best snorkeling spots. Um, I know the island pretty well. Yeah, we go fishing and actually probably get you on my friend's boat to go out fishing um, yeah it's a really so it's an island it has 11 climates of the 14 I think of the 14 of the world there so you have a lot of different options you can be go on Mauna Kea you can be in the snow and then I mean you sit at the beach and then you can look up at a snow-covered mountain waterfalls, you got the Hilo side, which is the, it's wet, the wet side. Kona is the dry side. Hiking and volcanoes and all kinds of stuff. You could swim with the, the wild dolphins right in Kona. If you hit, if you just happen to be out there on a, on the day, on a good day, where they come by, you can see them from our lanai all the time. And uh, we had some friends go to Kona, and I've never been able to swim with them because every time I go out snorkeling at places that they're supposed to be, they're never there. And then I have friends that come first time out, and they're like taking videos, swimming with the dolphins. Like, really? I've been going there eight years and I haven't been able to do that yet. So I was a little jelly on that. But hey, someday. Can't predict when they're gonna be there. But I know I've been to all the other islands, including Molokai. And the snorkeling in the big island is really, really amazing. I think it's better than the other islands. And the beaches are just gorgeous. You have to, like, you have to know where they are, you know, sort of, so. Okay. I like how, um, on this one, on this painting, how the black is still black and the white is still white, and the only gray is, like, right around the edges. Um, I like, this is really cool. Sort of looks like outer space or something. So I'm going to let this sit and I'll bring you back in about 10 minutes and we'll see what else forms. I don't think I want to tilt it anymore. I think I'm good with the, what it's doing. And, you know, I'm not too sure about the pretty much air bubbles and I think I just mix the white. So that's what's happening. See if those grow and I'll be right back. 
Okay, it's been about 15 minutes and we have had a lot of the small white dots come get bigger and it's just it's really cool. It's changed. It still might be changing. I think it is. Um, I have an area. I like it like it is a lot, but I'm just so tempted and I think I'm going to. I can't leave things alone, you know. So I think I'm going to do use a pipette and put dots on this white area. Uh, maybe just these three areas. So I have some black dots. I could run black through it, but then I really don't want any straight lines here. Everything has like a nice curve, circular shape to it. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, speed it up and I'll be putting dots in. I use a pipette. Now, the thing about using a pipette, which is this, this little has a bulb on it, is you have to make sure you get the air out before you start because all right, the color has gone here. So if you don't get the air out, then you might just get one big blob. So that's going to happen once in a while, but if you're careful, maybe not when it happen. All right, here we go. So you want to, on the side, you want to get that first dot out first until it starts coming smoothly and keep the bulb pushed. As soon as you let it go, more air is going to come in. So try it. Let's see what happens. You can also do different sizes depending on how much you squeeze it. I use dots a lot. Um, if you look back on some of my other paintings from, oh, I don't know, three or four months ago, you'll see that I've done this with some other injection pores. But sometimes I just do it with milk paint, but this is just the same paint that I use for this pour I'm doing it with. No rhyme or reason here. I'm just putting it down and trying to space it properly. This pipette holds a lot of paint when you're doing this, so you don't have to refill it that often. Now some of you are probably saying, stop, no, you shouldn't have done that, but hey, we're experimenting. I can always redo this and not do it. it sort of reminds me of the universe, like a galaxy far away before, and now I don't know what it's going to look like, so we'll see. So you can listen to some music now while I finish this up. As you could see, I messed up right here, and uh, I think I recouped pretty good. So, I think you can probably see that. So, because I messed up right here, I just went ahead and get did bigger dots, and that looks great. I like it. It's interesting. It's not a whole lot of gray. I mean, you got the black, black, and you got the white. Um, you have some grayer along the edges and then the black cells have come up. Yeah, I like it. This would be great on a bigger canvas. Of course, I wouldn't have it be as busy. It'd be spread out more and have more negative space in here. Um, yeah, I'll have to do this again on a bigger piece. So 
Thank you so much for watching. I would appreciate it if you would subscribe and comment. Um, that helps me. That helps support me and keeps me to be able to still do this. Um, I'm planning on opening an Etsy shop. I'm going to get that set up when I'm in Hawaii. And hopefully a lot of my paintings will be on there. Um, I, I can't ship them from there, so I'm going to probably open it up at, in April. But if there's any paintings that have you, you've seen in the previous videos that you're interested in, give me an email. And um, my son's here. He can make that happen. So aloha. And we'll see you soon. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.